Well, this is the unboxing of my latest watch. This is a Doxa watch. A little bit of an introduction to Doxa. Doxa was founded in 1889 as a Swiss manufacturer. They're probably most famous for being worn by Jacques Cousteau and his team, the famous French explorer. However, the brand went dormant in 1980. It was revived in the mid 2000s by a group called the Jenny Group in Switzerland. They are probably most famous for their dive watches. As I was wandering through duty-free shops and I happened to chance upon a dealer that sold multiple brands like Omega, Breitling, Tissot, Longines, the usual stuff you find, but in there they had Doxa. I was immediately intrigued because I've heard of Doxa watches, seen some YouTube videos, even though there's not a lot of information about the brand. So I was curious about it and I tried the watch on my wrist and well, obviously I bought it. So let's do the unboxing. It's a pretty standard cardboard box on the outside. The pouch the watch comes in is actually reminiscent of a business class pouch that you'd get on an airline. The dimensions are around the same. The watch does come with a international warranty card. I believe it's a two year warranty. Now let's proceed with the unboxing and my initial thoughts on the watch. So first things first, it comes with this cool little fish logo in here, Doxa 1889. It's a nylon material with a relatively sturdy zipper. Now, the model I bought is the Sub 200. This is the entry level Doxa watch and it's in the aquamarine color or as we all call it today, Tiffany blue. It's one of the reasons I bought this watch as opposed to the other colors, including their iconic orange dials. Now, some interesting features about the watch. It's 42 millimeters. However, it has a relatively thin dive bezel. So this watch, the inside of it is probably more akin to that of a 40 millimeter watch. It has a compact lug to lug of about 46 millimeters, which means it's, it wears even more compact than my IWC Mark 18, which is a 40 millimeter watch, but those lugs make it almost a 50 millimeter lug to lug watch, whereas this is around 46 millimeters. Now I'm going to take it out. And the watch also does come with a little lanyard or a strap. Not sure why I'd need that with this watch. The back of the pouch features a card slot in here. And I applaud Doxa for doing this as opposed to the standard generic travel pouch that you get even with watches costing 3, 4 and 5x of watch, what this watch costs. Now. The watch is an automatic watch with a Salida movement, I guess. It features about 38 hours of power reserve. It's a similar movement, probably not to the high standards of the IWC Mark 18 that I own. The back of the watch features that iconic fish from Doxa. It has 200 meters of water resistance and the crown also features the fish logo in the matching aquamarine color. The watch features a date complication and it has a unidirectional dive bezel over here. The bezel is also coated in sapphire and the watch overall, when you look at it from the side, it is relatively thin, but that is a little deceptive. As you can see, the crystal does stick out a significant amount. While a bigger watch, it's certainly not chunky by any stretch of the imagination. It uses 316L 
stainless steel, which is one of the best versions of the metal you can get. The dial is just fun. If you've been following the channel, you know I recently sold my Tudor Black Bay 58925, the, the sterling silver model. The reason I sold that watch is I never really gelled with it. And I'll tell you what I mean and why this watch, it seems like I'll gel with a lot more. The Tudor is a better watch, absolutely no doubt about it. 70 hours of power reserve, in-house movement, Rolex Tudor build quality, what can you say? However, that watch by itself is fantastic and magnificent. When you put that watch in a collection that already has some, let's just say this, sober pieces, my Patek Philippe Calatrava, even the IWC, even though it has that sunburst dial, having a taupe or a gray watch really doesn't add a little bit of fun to the collection. And I believe dive watches should be fun. They're meant to go in the water with, and I am gonna go into the water with this watch. And that's what I got when I saw this watch. Now, certainly, the reason I bought the blue watch was the Tiffany blue color is all the rage today. I do have another dive watch, which is my trusty Casio Duro. And you can really see the difference. Even though there's just a couple of millimeters between the Casio and the Doxa, you could really see with the Doxa that it does look and wear a lot more compact. I'm now going to put the watch on my wrist and give you my initial thoughts about it. First of all, there's a beads of rice bracelet that you can get with this watch. I think it's about $50 more. And I know the logical choice is to get that. However, look how much fun this strap is. Now, it is a 19 millimeter lug width, which is not going to be to everyone's liking, but once again, look at that color. Now, the clasp also does feature that fish logo on it, and the strap is a nice, thick strap here. I have to tell you, it wears very, very well. I usually keep myself to wearing watches that are about 40 millimeters or less, but with this watch, the 42 millimeters seems to work very well. You can now see the domed crystal. While it adds a little bit of height to the watch, it doesn't add that much, to be completely honest. The strap, at least on initial impressions, is supremely, supremely comfortable. The logical choice is Yes, to get that beads of rice bracelet, but please try this rubber strap. It is that impressive and it's that colorful. In my opinion, if you're going to get a watch with a dial that's this colorful, you may as well get a fun strap with it. And that would be my recommendation. Now, the rest of this watch, it does feature loom. I will do a couple of loom shots. I don't think the loom is that great but at least it lasts for a reasonable amount of time. It does feature a date window with a printed bezel around the date. The thing I like about this watch too is the certainly the minimalist amount of writing. It just has Doxa Sub 200 and the standard Swiss made on the dial. You know, especially coming from Tudor and I've owned the Pelagos and the Black Bay. Those certainly feature a lot of writing, so it's actually nice to see something that's as minimalist as this watch. Now, once again, this is a fun, fun watch. And that's, I think, one of the areas where Doxa can probably improve a little bit. This watch is sub $1,000, which I think is a Great price point for a watch like this, especially if you can pick it up with a little bit of a discount and probably a little bit of a tax-free shopping experience if you do happen to be in an airport or in an area that doesn't charge you taxes. So 
around the sub thousand dollar price point a watch like this is fun now doxa has their iconic models with the turtle style cases and those watches are probably 1500 all the way up to over two thousand dollars and to be very honest with you i don't believe doxa plays very well in that space this is the price point where they can be effective it's 20 to 25 percent of what a black bay 58 would cost and it's a fun watch once again it doesn't hold a candle if you're comparing specifications but if you're comparing fun i believe this watch wins well those that's my initial review and my initial thoughts and unboxing of this watch over time i'll do a more detailed review about this watch thanks again for watching the channel i do hope you're going to continue to join and support me on my watch journey.